What's up you guys, it's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. So today I'm gonna be talking to you, the reapplicant. Yes, you. So um, I've had a lot of questions from reapplicants because I was one myself. As a reapplicant, I think that there are some major points that you kind of have to hit when you are reapplying and that is what this video is going to be about. So I think the first thing that you should absolutely do as a reapplicant is look at your application and try to delineate the areas that you were deficient. You can obviously look and see, okay, uh, I my GPA wasn't as high as it could have been for that particular program. My GRE score wasn't high or they required the GRE and I didn't have the GRE, so maybe I should take the GRE if I'm interested in that program. But there are obviously like specific areas that you can touch that you can change be a GPA, GRE, and personal statement. Those are, and also hours, shadowing or healthcare experience. Those are areas that you can absolutely address and touch and hit um, prior to you know, doing any of this other stuff to make sure that yes, okay, like these are the areas that I was deficient in and now um, these are the areas that I need to fix. So after you've done that and gone through the application to see the areas that you have been deficient in, I think it's also important to reach out to those programs. I know that I did that. I called the various different schools just to kind of get some insight on, hey, like why, you know, wasn't I chosen essentially? And not every program gives you that information information, but most are willing to be like, well, you know, you just didn't have the GPA or you were missing this class and we actually require that class. It's one of our requirements, not recommendations. And so those are things that you can get from the program. And that is invaluable information because then now you can add that to what you've already done prior in looking at the areas that you were weak and be like, oh, okay, well, I can absolutely fix that or I have this information, it just wasn't sent in time. So go ahead, call the school, make sure you've looked at your application. And after you've done that, I think the third thing that you should absolutely do is fix those deficiencies, right? That is like the, the major absolute thing that you should be doing is fixing those deficiencies. So be it going to get some more healthcare hours or going to get some more shadowing, raising your GPA by taking some classes over, actually going through and taking the GRE, doing a consultation session to get your personal statement in order or um, going through one of those kind of overhaul systems that there are programs out there that for PPAs that allow them to kind of just get a complete overhaul of your, pro your application. Those are things that you kind of have to go through and make sure that you're able to now fix those areas that you're deficient in. And once you've fixed those areas, depending on yourself and what you want to do, like, do you want to apply the next year or do you want to apply in two years? That will allow you to now make a decision on how much you can get done. And you also, when you're trying to fix these areas, you want to look at the areas that you, you can get like your most bang for your buck, right? So if it's gonna take too much for you to raise your GPA from a 3.4 to a 3.5 or a 3.3 to a 3.5 and you wanna apply next year, then focus on areas that you can address immediately like the GRE or your patient care experience or your personal statement. And so you have to kind of rank those in your head like, all right, well, what is the most important thing for me to do at this moment in time? Once you figure that out, out, um, or you've had someone help you figure that out, then it's time to reapply. The fourth thing that you should do is reapply. Uh, don't be scared. Don't give up. You know, keep trucking along. Make sure that you've fixed those areas and now you're reapplying um, to the same schools if you're really interested in those programs. But I suggest you also like kind of broaden your search and see exactly what areas you may not have a problem living in and apply to schools in those areas as well because PA school is competitive and so it's really important to kind of just get in where you can but also make sure that where you get in will be a benefit to your mental health and your overall health in general. After you've applied my fifth thing that you should do is pray and now and that's obviously for everybody who um, prays but 
Like I'm a praying woman and prayer is like the way to go. Like you obviously like you have to have faith that, you know, you've done your best with this application and you are ready to put it out there. And so all you can do after you've applied is, you know, pray and wait, uh, play the waiting game. Um, so don't give up and you don't stop. Right. So even though you've applied and you've, you've, prayed, you don't stop. And that's not the end all be all because you've no idea if you're going to get an, um, an interview, uh, request or not. So it's important to continue to work on some of those areas. So now like, let's say your GPA wasn't something that you could have addressed in time to apply before the various different deadlines. But while you're waiting and you're praying and you're playing the waiting game, like I said, then you're also making moves. So you're also applying to these different uh, classes to make sure that you can retake them or take new classes that will raise your GPA so that by the time you get into PA school, you have some extra knowledge or God forbid, if you don't get into PA school, that cycle, then you've already taken a class and your GPA would have been raised. You want to be in PA school so bad that everything that you do reminds you of PA school? This would look good at a PA school interview, cause I'm a star. No, that's different, no. This makes me look desperate, but you are a desperate girl. Let's get this. Mm, I bet this is what PA school smells like. Anybody looking? Nobody looking? I wanna smell like PA school. Mm, that smells so good, I'm getting in. If that was you, you're doing way too much. Just let me help you get into PA school. Starting this Sunday, I will be doing live 60 minute consulting sessions where you'll be able to talk to me via phone or video chat and ask me any question that you may have about PA school and the PA school application. We'll also be able to sit down and talk about everything from your GPA to your personal statement. So just head on over to my website at adonathepa.com to book your session today because slots are limited. So head over there right now. So those are the five things that I feel like you should absolutely do as a reapplicant. Once you've kind of followed that model, I think that you know you're on the right track, and there's really nothing else that you can do at that point in time, but. Um, kind of continue to move forward. So I hope this was helpful to you re-applicants out there. If you have any other questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have not already done so, subscribe and like this video and follow me on Instagram at PA. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.